In this section, we, we come on a topic that we're going to come back to again and again, and that's the subject of parameterizations. So um, I included a link to a video that had a CNC routing machine. Basically, there was a machine that had a tool that was spinning, and then there's a hunk of metal here, and the tool is routing or carving out a part from this hunk of metal. Now, if you think about what has to happen, CNC, by the way, means computer numerical controlled. So this whole, this whole chunk was being controlled by the table. And there were three motors in that. There was, there's a motor that can, um, that can roll this back and forth, left and right. And then that's sitting on another table with another thing to roll underneath here. So it can roll the table this way. So you've got like an X control and a Y control, and then that whole thing <clears throat> could be moved up and down by some kind of piston. And so there are really, th to control it three-dimensionally, you really have to be getting a, a set of instructions to the XY motor, right, the one that can move us back and forth, and a set of instructions to, or sorry, the, the set of instructions to the, the X motor, right, that can move you back and forth this way, a set of instructions to the Y motor that can that can roll that back and forth this way, and then a set of instructions to the, the Z motor that can move you up and down. So in order for the computer to control this and and move the router bit where you want it to go in order to carve out the particular piece, you have to have three functions. You have to have a function that provides your X location as a function of time. So your Y location as a function of time and your Z location as a function of time. It has to be that way so that you can send these instructions to one motor, these instructions to the other, and these instructions to to the up and down, right? So now usually when we when we name functions, we usually give them names like F or G or H. But since this function's purpose is to control X, it seems like a natural name for this function should be X of T. This would be a natural name for the function that gives you the y coordinate and so on. So you could think of it this way that x is some function of t, y is another function of t, and z is a third function of t. And that's fine, but also recognize that sometimes we'll just use the name of the variable that they're controlling as sort of a natural naming system. Let's look at an example. Suppose you want to make your machine carve out a circle. So in order to do that, looking down from above, you're going to need, okay, here's our axes, you're going to need to go around a circle, maybe like this, right? Let's think about the two individual components, what the two pieces have to do. Let's think about first what the x has to do as a function of time and then think about separately what the y has to do. So first x is going to have to start out looks like over here and then as you go around the circle as you go around the circle can you see that the x value has to decrease go negative and then as you come back around the circle the x value will come back up so if you think about this the x value is going to have to start here go down and then come back up. Where the y value, the y value starts at zero, right? As you go, as you move up around the circle, the y value goes up, and then as you start to come back down, the y value goes down, and then it comes back up again. again. So as you go around the circle, if you just think about your vertical position, your vertical position starts at zero, you increase vertically, you come back down, you go to the bottom, and you come back up, right? So your, your y coordinate is doing something like this. So can you see how x and y are separate functions of this, this parameter t? So this is an example of a parameterization. Para means to the side. Uh-oh. Para means to the side and meter means measure. So t is something that you're measuring on the side. As you look at it, you, you see the curve emerging, right? If you look at what the machine is going to cut out, if we give it these instructions, then we're just going to see it. We're going to see the circle, right? 
On the side, though, you can think individually x and y are changing as a function of this variable t, right, the parameter. All right, so we can have, basically, we can have our location given by, right, our x and y location given by a parameter. Well, I guess if our thing was three-dimensional, we would also have to program z, right? But if we wanted the circle to be in the plane, then we would probably just set z to remain at some constant level, maybe zero or whatever that level is that we wanted it to be at. Okay, so you could have all three as a function of t. It's just if it's, a sh it's, if it's shape in the plane, basically you set z to be some constant. That'll make it a nice flat shape. Okay, this is the idea of a parameterization. Now we'll come back to this example. You can see how on a circle it looks like the graphs of cosine and sine are important for building that parameterization of the circle. You can also have functions of more than one parameter. If there's one parameter, then the, then the shape that you get will be one-dimensional because there's one freedom. You can change time and then everything's locked in, right? If there are two parameters, then the shape you can get will be two-dimensional. Um, if there were three parameters, three-dimensional, and so on, those will be the two important ca cases in this class, having either one parameter or two parameter, and then two parameters. And then if you have one parameter, what curve do you get? If you have two parameters, what surface do you get? What two-dimensional thing do you get? Let's look at one more example. Suppose we want to carve a line here. So we want to uh, we want to come up with equations that we can that we can then program our routing table so that it will cut a line from one point to another point. How can we get equations of that line? Well, here's an idea. Suppose we've got our, our one location. Maybe this is at the point 1, negative 2, and then this is over. So maybe let's say this is at 4, 1. What we could do is calculate the vector that would carry us from here to here in one step. That vector v would be, let's see, to go from 1 to 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, you've got to go over 3, and to go from negative 2 to 1, 1 minus minus 2 is also 3, so we get this vector v is equal to 3, 3. Then we could say, all right, what we need to do is to make that vector longer as time goes on. So when t is 0, then, then we just have nothing, right? And this vector will get longer so that by the time t is 1, the vector is the complete length that would carry me from here to here. Now I need to take that vector and I need to glue it to this starting point. So I'll put in this point 1, negative 2 right there. That way when t is 0, can you see that this will disappear and I'll be at 1, negative 2? And by the time t gets to 1, then I'll have 3, 3 plus 1, negative 2. That will be, I'll be at location 4, 1. So this is going to be my parameterization. Now I can combine that into a single piece. If I distribute that t and add this 1, so distribute the t here and add the negative 2, now I have my x. And my x and my y as a function of t. Or if we want to think of them as separate functions, x is equal to 3t plus 1, and y is equal to 3t minus 2. Now we should give bounds on t. We're thinking that t is going to start at 0 and end at 1. So we have now parameterized our line.